Oh dear, I'm so sorry. Usman, I'm so sorry. Thank you for letting me know there's been no sound up until now. Let me just recap. Um, I might just, I might just uh, cut the video to where we are now. There is very little on currencies at the moment. The dollar is not giving my, much clarity uh, and the cross pairs are very messed up. The only things that I have seen, I will spare you the pain of the previous 10 minutes of no sound, is pound CAD. GBP pairs are looking bullish. Pound CAD, I'm going to wait. I'm looking for a, a bullish setup. Pound Aussie and Pound Kiwi, I'm also going to wait. Tomorrow, the next day, I'm looking for a bullish setup. Tomorrow or Sunday or Monday. I'm um, looking for those. That is it. I will clip the video so that you only get this part here, okay? Now we're going to have a look at the rest of the stuff. Gold. Gold is still in this zone. You can see how it has broken through support, retested as resistance, gone down to the next level, come back up, retested as resistance, and ping-ponging around. So the question really is, and I spoke about this in previous weeks, my issue with it is I don't want to short it because the distance is down to the downside are very, it's generally bullish and therefore the moves down are very low, higher probability, higher risk, sorry, low probability, higher risk, meaning they're not going to go that far. I don't think gold is at this time is necessarily just going to drop down to 1800. I'm not really sure at this time. It looks like it's really trying to stay where it is. So it's ping ponging between those levels. In fact, my expectation is that it will potentially turn bullish if 1900 holds. So I don't want to commit to any really big decisions there. Day trading, sure, but end of day, no. Um, silver, obviously, look at this. It's an uptrend, but it, you wouldn't think so. You would think it was very bearish. It's downtrend on the weekly, just all over the place. Uptrend on the monthly, it's conflicting. It's not really the best stuff to trade. It doesn't matter how much you love gold. There are times when gold is definitely great to trade and times when it's not great to trade. Natural gas, I was looking for a bullish setup here, which I got, but then it's gone down. So it's now a bit of a downtrend. It's battling with this resistance level. So we will see. West Texas, nice and bullish. So crude oil is pushing up to the upside. You can see the weekly candle there, offer level of support. There, nice little bullish candle pushing up. That's the top level. And then we'll see what happens. Brent crude, same area, nothing there. Wheat, nothing. Coffee, no. Uh, sugar, no, it's a mess. <clears throat> Cotton, no, it's a mess. Look at Cotton's monthly, monthly. Cotton is garbage. Okay, let's look at the S&P or let's look at the, these. They've had a, we've had a big correction here. This is a weekly ping-ponging around. Monthly, it's still bullish. Like, so don't get, don't get confused. We are still in a bull trend. We're still generally above the 10 and 20. For now. And we're ping-ponging all over the place. What are the odds that, you know, there's a lot of, there's plenty of YouTube content out there that the sky is going to crash. Jobs numbers are still good. We've got an NFP on Friday. We'll see. Overall, things aren't looking bad. So, in general, the conditions are generally better. They're more, they're better than worse. But we still have uncertainty, and the uncertainty is ping-ponging around. So, what does it mean? It means we should come out to the upside. We should. Um, <clears throat> when I look at some of the indices, they definitely need a weekly correction. So, when I look at S&P, we need a weekly retracement down to here. And I'm okay with that. And that still means we're in a bull market. We just get a weekly retracement down. NASDAQ, we definitely need a weekly retracement down. That's a move down to these lows here potentially. And that's still, and we have a double top with bearish divergence. But that still means we're in a bull market. We're in a bull market until we come below here. But there's no setups. Double top, no setups. We're seeing a correction here. FTSE. Still bearish to the downside, so that's still a correction there. We're still in a monthly uptrend, higher lows, high highs. So at this time, we are still in a bull market. Okay, DAX, solid gap down, but double top, bearish divergence. We're still in a bull market. If we come down to 14,800, find a bullish candle, and head back up, but in three months' time, we're in all-time highs, we're still in a bull market, guys. You, have, you need lots of evidence before you shift bearish. And I'm just saying, because in times like these, we go, oh, it's not bullish, it's not a bull market, it's not a bull market. We are in a bull market. We're having a retracement within a bull market. <clears throat> this is garbage. Nikkei needs a retracement. Look how bullish it's been. It needs a pullback down to there. 
And all of that would be two, three weeks or even a month or even a, just a week of dropping through the floor, which would feel like a bear market, but then it would solidify and start going up again. And then you'd look at the technical structure of it and it would still be bullish. So don't let what is what you're hearing in the news and stuff, if it doesn't break the monthly or weekly structures, it's still bullish. And it always drops faster than it goes up. Man, Apple, if there's ever one that needs a weekly retracement, but it's still bullish. Look at this. Look at that setup there. <clears throat> still needs it. Amazon is battling, but there's a setup here, but I think we need to come back. Look at how the candles get wicks on top, exhaustion, and smaller and smaller and smaller. I think we're going to get that pullback. Maybe not this week, but maybe next week, but we need it. Uh, uh, AT&T struggling in this area. That's a real battle for AT&T right there. Arc. Arc's doing okay. Arc's broken to the upside pullback. It's doing okay. If we were in a bear market like we were, if we were in a bear market like we were in November or December here, <clears throat> we, we'd be down here. We're not. We've moved above the 50 period moving average for Arc of all of them. Let's see what PayPal looks like. But we've moved above it. We're not as weak as people think. And I say that because I also have YouTube and I check YouTube in the morning and I see stuff coming up and you just scan the, the, the YouTube thumbnails and the titles and it's all like, oh my God, we're going to die. And it's very dramatic. I'm not saying we want to have bear markets and we don't have strong corrections. I'm saying that the stuff needs to be taken with a bucket of salt. That's all I'm saying. Amex looks fine. That looks good. Berkshire Hathaway looks okay. So we spoke, we had some bearish divergence here. We had a bit of a double bottom. We've still pushed up here. We've got another little bit of a double top here. Let's see what happens with that, okay? Coca-Cola. Not much happening there for now. BP. Oh, let's just forget about those for now because we it's tied to crude oil. JP Morgan looks fine. Okay. So JP Morgan, we've got this little level here. It's definitely a crisp level. We pull back in. We're at the level. It's not that bad. It's not heavily bearish. We'll see what happens. Could still close higher above the week. We've got Adidas, definitely uh, Converse. Uh, um, con convergence. I don't know what's wrong with me. We're still in an uptrend of the weekly. It's a good area for it to find support where it is now. So even if we close the week down, we're still fine. Metz is doing fine. Morgan Stanley is bearish. That's a little bit bearish. I expect that to come down towards these levels. No setup. Video definitely needs to take a breather. We all know this. You all know this. Been talking about this for a while. Netflix, double top. Bearish divergence. Likely to have a bit of a correction down to 400 or lower. PayPal. Okay, so PayPal's come up, bumped its head along here. We need a bit of a bearish candle. So we'd need a momentum candle to close us down to the outside. And then we'll see. Um, do I think EuroCAD and US dollar sterling will continue to rise and go up off the weekly charts? Okay, let me go back to those quickly. We'll come back. Let me finish the, the equities and then I'll answer your question. Yeah, that's running out of steam. That's running out of steam. We need a weekly correction here. Spider, bearish, but again, overall, this behavior is... That's okay. It's not great. Look, 2023 was always going to be sideways motion. So whatever bullish stuff we get out of it, good. That looks good. Correction down here will be fine. Okay, so let me go back. There was Tesla. How's Tesla doing? Tesla's fine. It's coming back up to this general bullish trend line and a major level of 300. So let's see how it reacts when it gets there. But it looks okay so far. Vanguard. Looks fine. That was a little bush set up there. Looks okay here. Looks fine. It's a double top bearish divergence. So a lot of these hints that they will have a, a correction between this week and next week. But we're still in a bull market at this time. All right. Let me go back to the other pairs. You wanted me to look at EuroCAD. Oh, EuroCAD. So EuroCAD, that's bullish to me. I think that's going to break out. It has broken out to the upside. That looks like nice and bullish. So, so far, EuroCAD looks bullish to me. Um, and dollar CAD, which is GBP dollar, to me looks bullish. Still, 
so far. So far, still bullish. Um, look, it's got that 50 period moving average. It has to get past there. It still looks bullish. You're an Aussie. I, I love, by the way, that you still look at the weekly charts, and that's good. Weekly chart, yeah. What do you think? So it still looks bullish to me. That looks really bullish here. That looks really bullish. Still looks bullish. Okay. And bonds. Okay. <clears throat> so to address the elephant in the room, one of the concerns is that if no one's buying bonds, this is the issue. No one's buying government debt and government is having to um, create stimulus and all these different kinds of things. Technically, that's true, but technically it's true that no one's buying bonds. But it depends how you interpret it. My interpretation is that people are still bullish. There is still a, an appetite to invest in the stock market because people are still optimistic about the stock market. And so they are choosing to put their money into stocks right now instead of into bonds, which is a very rational, very reasonable explanation. People still have an appetite to invest. They've made a lot of money over the last 10, 15 years. A lot of things still look optimistic to a lot of people. This data coming out of the US looks amazing. Therefore, their portfolio is more stocks than bonds. Therefore, they're not buying bonds. Therefore, they're selling bonds. So to obsess about that they're selling bonds and this means bad stuff is to miss the good stuff, which is say that people are investing in stocks. When people stop investing in stocks, that's when we have a problem. That's when the problem strikes. Because when people lose interest in stocks and start selling, that's when the shit hits the fan. Really. So, let's pay attention to that. That's the bigger indicator. Okay, cryptos. Still hovering here. Let's put it in. Let's mark it. Let's put it in its range. Get out of the range. It's trying to break higher. It is trying to break higher. Let's see how it does. Ethereum. <clears throat> it's trying to break higher. Let's put it over there. It's trying to do that. Let's see if it can stay above that. It's trying. It will do that when stocks pick up and take off. Okay. What else? Any other questions? What I say that Forex in the grand is the granddaddy of all financial markets, such as stocks, bonds, commodities. They're different animals. I think Forex is really popular for earning kind of cash on a month by month basis in the same way that options are as well and bonds, people trading those. Um, I think stocks are always and will always be seen as an as a pension investment, longer term investment in the belief that good companies exist and you can make money off those. And therefore, I think they're seen as a vehicle for that. Um, so I think although there's a lot of money going through currencies, I don't think it necessarily holds the appeal. Money has to go through it because, you know, countries are sending money, you know, back and forth between each other. But as an investment vehicle, I think stocks are the primary one. Um, any new podcast on the way? So there's some potential, potential, I don't want to jinx it, some possible collaboration between me and some other people for podcasts, um, which is why I haven't done my second one. I have started drafting the script on the second one. So I've started working on it. And my other thought was to do another L Brooks video, maybe tomorrow. Um, I've just got a lot of, a lot of little things. So I need to do another L Brooks video and then the next podcast. So um, basically, let's say next week. Next week, come back to me on this, Aaron, and good to hear from you next week. I should have an answer on that one. Cool. All right, guys. Um, cool. I'll let you, I'm, I'm going to let you go. You can let me go. I've got to go start cooking dinner. I'm the wife in this scenario. I'm always at home, and I've got to get, get cooking on the meal. Um, and thank you very much, Aaron. Good to see you involved. Always as pleasure, Usman. Always a, a pleasure to have you involved. But I'll uh, let you guys go, and then I will speak to you possibly tomorrow night or on Monday or Tuesday night, all right? You too, guys. Thank you very much.